So this next solo is based on a John Lee Hooker inspired boogie reminiscent of Boom Boom or even LaGrange by ZZ Top. It's a very common groove in the blues and a lot of it kind of focuses around one chord, you know, rather than a 12 bar format. So it's really, really good for these kind of static uh, jams. Um, first of all, we're going to look at the rhythm guitar part. And on the backing track, I actually played this in open G tuning. Um, I'll just quickly, by the magic of editing, switch to a guitar in that tuning and demonstrate what I played. But it is possible to play it in standard tuning as well. <laughs> So open G tuning gives us a D, G, D, G, B, D. So you get an open G chord with a D in the bass. Um, so with this, it's all open strings kind of bouncing between the open um, A string, or G string in this case, and the open uh, D and G string. Um, and then just moving, kind of going from the uh, third fret on the A string or G string to the fifth fret. likelihood is in a jam situation you're not just going to be able to you know have the luxury of kind of tuning down to open G tuning just to play a rhythm part so it's possible to play this in standard tuning which would give us something like this so um, we're keeping that we're playing those open D and G strings but we're actually fretting this G note on the third fret and a low E string and then uh, First fret on the A string, then open D and G strings, third fret on the A string. That's all that's going on underneath. Um, even though we're not playing a G7 chord, it's kind of implicit in the harmony that this is kind of like a, a dominant, static dominant chord that's kind of going on. So again, with the solo, there's a lot of kind of call and response phrasing, um, you know, each new phrase has something to do with the last, um, and uh, you know, kind of a lot of repetition in there as well. So I would suggest again listen to the solo a bunch of times before you attempt to learn it, just so you can internalize it and memorize it. But we kind of start with this one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> So um, wah, bah, it kind of starts on the on the second beat. This is another cool kind of phrasing tip that all of your phrases don't need to start on the first beat. You can kind of let it breathe. You know, sometimes it has more impact to go one, two, three, four, one. So what we've got here, again, it's that bend that I do a lot, that kind of slidey bend. Um, we bend on the, um, we're kind of, you know, in home position or position one of the G minor pentatonic scale. Um, we're bending uh, five on the G up a whole step and we kind of let the bend drop um, but at the same time as we release we slide up to the sixth fret slide up to the flat five there on the um, G string and then slide it back down to the fifth fret and then pull off to uh, three and then that's five on the D, three on the G, five on the G. And then, very common blues lick. So what we're doing there, we're sliding um, five on the G up to seven on the G, catching eight, flat seven of the, chord, of the uh, scale and of the chord. Uh, on the B string, coming back down, uh, so that's um, on the G string it's 7, slide down to 5, pull off to 3, back to 5, 
And then we pick up this double stop at the end. Um, so it's the third and the fifth of the chord, in this case, um, fifth, sorry, fourth fret on the G, third fret on the B, but we slide into it from one fret below. So we get this phrase, one, two, three, four, one. And then the next phrase, So the first part's the same. Until we get that far, instead of coming back down, we go. So, we're kind of bouncing between the fifth and the seventh degree of the, of the uh, chord. Uh, in other words, uh, six, uh, seventh fret on the G and um, sixth fret on the B before taking it up to the um, the root note on the eighth fret of the B. I might I may have slid back down to the flat seven again. I I may not. It's just something I knowing me. It's so me. It's such a me thing to do that I probably did do it, but may not. The tab's going to be more accurate than this kind of breakdown anyway. So if you put it all together, you get two licks that kind of sound like a question and an answer. So one, two, three, four, one. And then the response. lick one two three four one so that's kind of straight out of a kind of Albert King Steve Ray Vaughan kind of playbook nothing clever about it in terms of you know kind of note choice it's just pure uh, G minor pentatonic but we kind of get this kind of gnarly bend um, on the uh, eighth fret on the high E where you can catch the, the B string. Not thinking about what notes you're bending to on the, as long as you're bending up a whole step on the high E, the underlying kind of overtones aren't, you know, don't necessarily need to be tuneful. In fact, it's, you know, what they kind of call train wreck bend sometimes where Stevie would do that. You know, kind of Albert King thing. But what we do, we kind of bend let it come down and then that's uh, six on the high E, hammer to eight, so eight on the B, back to six on the high, high E, and then this is almost a, that lick, I do that a lot, it's kind of a BB King thing, um, you hear John Mayer do that as well. So that's um, six on the high E um, and eight on the B, pull off to six and slide down to three. Um, that's a, the second part of it. So that's five on the G. Three on the B, three on the high E, tease that slightly sharp. Sorry, sorry, three on the G, tease that slightly sharp. And then to the root note, so five on the D string, and then pull off to the flat seven on the D. Um, so that lick, although it's different from the first two, it follows a similar rhythm. You know, it's got something to do with it. If you kind of put it all together, one, two, three, four, one. response similar rhythm it's got a kind of slightly meaner sound to it but it still starts on the two you know um, but then 
well, and I mentioned in the previous solo, the rule of threes, you know, kind of playing three licks that have got something in common and then, you know, your fourth phrase um, being something different that you can kind of get away with because you kind of built up um, a theme. Uh, I don't know if that's the rule of threes, but that's how I interpret the rule of threes. So we get um, we get a, a diminished, uh, diminished half hole, half hole, yeah, half hole lick um, that goes like this. <laughs> slowly to see harder to play slowly um so what we've got there this is all kind of in blues tonality anyway because we've got the flat seven the root flat seven major sixth but we kind of do this series of kind of pull-offs and slides hammer-ons pull-offs and slides so We've got three on the D string, hammer to five, pull off to three, slide down to two, slide back up to three, and then hammer on to five. And then we go through the minor third to the major third, so that's um, three, hammer to four on the G. That's uh, three, five, back to three on the B string. And then. So, had a similar lick in the previous solo. That's five on the B. This is all on the B string, so five, hammer to six, pull off to five, pull off to three, slide down to two, back to three. And then five to three to five on the B again. Bend up half a step, so you bend in that major sixth up to a flat seven. We've got that little slidey bend, so you bend up half a step on the fifth fret on the B, and then release it and slide up to six, back down to five, slide back down to five, and then pull off to three, and then five uh, on the G to three on the B and then that's a little kind of sixth shape where we play flat three to major third to root so in other words uh, three on the G hammer to four and then three on the high E so again you know it's it's got these uh, symmetrical scales can sound bluesy. They give you a slightly kind of outside sound, but they still have a lot of the notes in the in the blues tonality. You know, in here, right here, we've got we've got the flat seven, the root, the sixth, flat three, major third, fifth, uh, sixth, flat seven, sixth, um, fifth, flat five, which is in the blues scale. So it's all kind of fair game. a little bit of a you know a little bit of kind of an element of danger a bit of an edge so that's the first part of the solo let's put it all together so we've got one two three four one
part of the solo. Three, four, one. <laughs> So what we've got there, we kind of move into the BB box. Um, again, it would pay to have some fretboard knowledge. So, um, you know, really sort of brush up on your major and minor pentatonic scales in G. As I say, I have a course called Master the Fretboard, which covers fretboard visualization. Um, so that will kind of give you the information you need if you, uh, if you need to brush up on your fretboard knowledge. But um, what we've got here. <laughs> That kind of BB King thing of bouncing between the um, the sixth and the root. Um, so we slide up from we slide up almost immediately as a grace note from seven to nine on the G, uh, and then we go between nine on the G and eight on the B, which is the root note rhythmically. And then we catch this, which I really like to do. Yeah, jumping up with your with your little finger to twelve on the E string, and then to eleven on the B, teasing that slightly sharp, and then twelve on the G, and then pull off to ten. So what we're doing, we're getting the sixth, the flat three, which we're kind of sending on the way to the major third, root, flat seven. You know, oh, really kind of um, outlining a lot of the chord tones in this underlying G7 chord. So we've got one, two, three, four, one. And then. So what we've got, another one of those kind of slidey bends. Same thing as down here. Um, so we, we take the sixth, but we bend up half a step to the flat seven. So bend up to 12 on the high E. Release the bend, but slide up immediately to 13, back down to 12, and then pull off to 10. Yeah, and then 13 on the B to 10 on the high E. And then we go flat three to major third, so that's um, 11 to 12, slide up to 12 on the B string. And then we quickly slide up from the 12th fret to the, um, to the 17th fret on the B string, but as we're doing that, we're bending an extra half step. So uh, slide, so we're taking the sixth, bending up to the flat seven. So in other words, the uh, 17th fret bending up to the uh, 18th. So. Sounds better with a little bit of overdrive as it did in, in the recording, but. And then we interrupt it with the, um, the high E string, the, the, the root note on the 15th fret of the high E. Quite naughty. Um, not kind of typically bluesy, but it's you know it's got a little bit of a little bit of kind of sauciness to it. But um, and again, this phrase um, it's not far removed really from the first part of the solo. It's still kind of referencing it rhythmically. Um, but we we take that phrase. And then we play it again. The first part is exactly the same. So again, that's kind of call and response. And then we get this triplet lick. Um, yeah, that was it. Played it for, managed to play it first time. That was that was improvising the solo. Um, I've got certain variations of this type of lick. That actually, I think that was it. Maybe that's what I just played just then. But. Yeah, so. So what we do there, um, kind of major pentatonic to start with. So we bend up to the uh, to the major third. Um, they're bending a whole step on 10 on the B. Um, and then we're doing a series of kind of chromatic um, 
notes on the, the high E string. So that's eight, nine, ten, and then pull off to nine, pull off to eight on the on the high E. And then that's um eleven on the B, eight on the high E, and then we've got this kind of series of pull-offs, 11, 10, 8 on the B. So, and then 9 on the G, and then back to 8 on the B, back to the root note. So that's the next part of the solo. If we put it all together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. For the next part, I switch to the, um, the bridge pickup. I'll, I'll stay on the neck pickup just for demonstration purposes, just to kind of play it cleanly. Um, but uh, what we have is a kind of um, Billy Gibbons kind of triplety type thing where we go. Uh, so we're, we're taking this shape, this double stop. And we're, we're moving it up, um, but we're picking out various kind of intervals on the way. So um, this is the shape. So if you put your third finger on the seventh fret on the G string and your second finger on the sixth fret on the B. And you're just playing a triplet rhythm and I'm, I'm using the pick and my middle finger. Just alternating between the two, but it's, uh, you know, triple lip, triple lip, triple lip. You can use a pick. You can use both fingers if you like. But what we've got there, we're outlining. We've got the, um, the fifth and the flat seven of the chord. You move it up two frets, um, and what that gives us that's nine on the G and eight on the B. That gives us the sixth and the root. Um, and then we move it up another three frets. Same shape, so 12 on the G, 11 on the B. That gives us the root and the flat three. Flat three, should I say. Sorry, my Essex accent slipping in. And then we slide it up um, to um, same shape. Uh, what's that? That's um, 16 on the G. 15 on the B, you have to excuse me, I don't really think in, I think in intervals, I don't think in fret numbers. Um, uh, so that gives us the third, major third, and the fifth. So, you know, a lot of chord tones and a lot of kind of tension notes, um, but it's quite a handy thing to do, very linear thing. So one, two, three, four. I think I'm giving it some vibrato um, on the recording, not that side to side vibrato that I'm doing here for some reason um, but you know more of a it's kind of shaking it a little bit uh, it's similar to what Stevie Ray Vaughan does in Pride of Joy solo although that's in a different key that's in E or E flat with his tuning um, but you know it creates a lot of tension and it's a kind of theme so we do that so we go one two three four and and then we do the same thing again Till we get to that second part because we're building a theme and then we play uh, which is a very Stevie Ray Vaughan lick um, certainly that part of this part part of it is There's a little kind of slide off at the end there, a uh, little run off. Um, but again, triplet rhythm. Yeah. 
So what we do, we bend um, on a G string, we're bending uh, 17 uh, up a whole step. Doing this partial bar on 15 on the B and the high E string. And then that's um, 18 to 15, oh, sorry, 18 on the B to 15 on the high E. This part, that's 17 on the high E to 15 to 16, pull off to 15. It's got um, a flat nine in there or a flat two which is a kind of Stevie thing, kind of passing note. Again, that's not a note that I outlined earlier in the, in the harmony, but you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an out, kind of outside note, kind of passing note. Um, um, then we've got, that's um, 18 on the B, 15 on the high E, back to 18 on the B, and then 15 on the B string. Um, and then we've got So we've got the flat five in there um, from the blues scale. So that is 18 on the G, 15 on the B, and then back to 18 on the G, and you slide down. 17 and then pull off to 15 and then to 17 on the D string and then um, and then we got kind of do this partial bar between the G and the D strings so 17 G 17 D and then 15 G hammer to 16G and then that's 17 D pull off to 15 D back to 17 on the D there's a little uh, kind of gliss in there as well. I think I played something like this. Um, so 15 on the D string and a kind of grace note slide <clears throat> all on the uh, A string from 17. Slide down to 15 and then pull off to 13. Kind of landing on that flat three but with the promise that you're going to bend it slightly sharp. Just you know, it was just something I played kind of off the cuff, but. That sort of thing. I can't remember the exact timing of that little runoff at the end, but you'll hear it and it will be accurate in the, in the tab. You know, another solo that features a lot of kind of um, call and response, and you know we're not just kind of idly noodling. Each phrase has something to do with the last one. You know, you've got the rule of threes in there where you play three similar phrases, and there's something different. Um, there's plenty of space in there. You know, plenty of repetition, repetition, um, and uh, you know, all over a kind of static boogie. So hopefully, you can take some of those licks and incorporate them into your own playing and you know your own kind of style different grooves and stuff but um yeah some interesting stuff in there anyway hopefully 
So let's look at the next solo.